Hello and welcome to the course Theory of Computation. This will be the first lecture of the course. Uh, we will give a brief, brief overview of what we are going to see during the, uh, during the course. Right? So, this will also be a slightly expanded form uh, of the, the teaser video or the introductory video that we had put out about the course. Right? So, this is uh, Theory of Computation which is one of the most uh, fundamental courses of the uh, of any uh, BTEC curriculum in computer science. Okay? So, so let us consider uh, some problems or some questions that are computational in nature. Right? So, one of them uh, problem 1 is this uh, I have a computer, I have a computer program and uh, let us say there is an input that I want to enter into the computer program. And uh, I want to know whether if I enter this input into this program, will this program terminate uh, when this input is fed. Okay. So, if, if this input is fed into this program, will this program terminate. So, there are two possibilities. One is that the program uh, runs for a while, terminates, um, says, says gives some output or, or, or says accept or reject or whatever. The other possibility is that it this particular input somehow uh, leads this program into some kind of an infinite loop kind of situation. Right? So, this, this is able to figure out some situation where this leads into some infinite loop and it never stops. Right? So, is this such an input that this, that this program will uh, never terminate. So, the question is will this program terminate when this input is fed into this program. So, this is a one computational question. The second computational question is I have a graph G. right? So, graphs are objects like what I have drawn over here. Now, I have graph uh, two graphs I have drawn here. Can this can can a graph be colored using three colors? right? So, what is a graph? Graph contains of uh, two things one is uh, vertex. So, these uh, these dots are vertices right these dots. Uh, the, so, the one on the left has four dots. And um, the lines or the curves, curved lines connecting the dots are what is called edges. Right? So, the question is uh, the question is uh, 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 are these graphs can these be colored using three colors. Right? So, uh, let us try for one of these problems let us uh, for one of these graphs. Um, so, you want to color them in three colors in such a way that um, the, the nearby uh, neighboring uh, vertices do not get the same color. So, let us say I start with red for the for the top vertex over here. Okay, so, these are two graphs the one on the left and one on the right. Uh, right. So, let us first consider the one on the left. So, let us say the top uh, vertex we gave the color red. Now, we have to use another color let us say blue for the, the one, one on the right side. Now, notice that the one on the left side now cannot get red because uh, red is, is adjacent to that. So, so over here we have to use a third color let us say green. So, red uh, because green this vertex is near to the red as well as near to the blue. right? So, green we have to use a third color. Now, let us see coming to the bottom vertex now we have to get a fourth color let us say I do not know yellow. Right, because uh, this vertex is adjacent to all the other three neighbors, all the other three vertices. So we need to have four colors to color this. So one may ask the same question for the graph on the right side as well. So uh, I'm not going to work out uh, the the colorings for the graph on the right side, um, but um, the answer is that we can uh, color it using three colors. So, I just say three colorable. Right? So, there is also a famous graph called the uh, uh, Peterson graph. So, you can see that it is very nice and symmetric. Right? So, this is three colorable whereas, the one on the left is uh, at least the way we tried we could not get a uh, three coloring. If you look at the one on the left closely uh, you can see that you whatever you try you need four colors because the property that this, this graph has is that every vertex is near to every other vertex. right? So, this graph requires four colors.
whereas this one requires only three colors. So the, this is the question. So given a graph, and uh, the question is, can can we color it using three colors? So this is another question, right? So you're given a graph, and you are asked to color it using three colors. The third question, that's also a computational question, is suppose uh, I want to drive from my home to the office. What is the shortest route? So suppose, so assuming that all the necessary data is given, like uh, the distance from my home to office, which are the different options that I have in front of me, like the different road networks, the traffic information, how much time will it take for me for each of these stretches of roads, all of this information is given. Can you tell me uh, which is the shortest route? Now I've described three problems. First one is given a program and an input, whether this input uh, will lead the program to a termination, will the program terminate or will it lead to an infinite loop. Second is the three color ability, right? we saw two examples as well. The third one is simpler, like we just given the road network and the road network distance or traffic information, can we compute the shortest route from uh, uh, let us say home to office or it could be any, any place to any other place, let us say, right? say Bangalore to Hyderabad. right? So we have seen three problems. It so turns out that one of them, one of these problems are easy. So I'm not really qualifying. I'm not really qualified what easy is. Uh, one of them is hard, and the third one is impossible. Okay. Um, so one of them is easy, one of them is hard, and the third one is impossible. Okay. This is slightly more clearer, I think. So what does what do I mean by easy and what do I mean by hard and what do I mean by impossible All right and 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 how, how are we able to infer about each of these things like how can we re reach to these conclusions that one of them is easy one of them is not easy one of them is hard one of them is impossible right so the meaning of these statements itself is not um, I'm, I'm not defined right now but I'm just saying that one of them is easy and one of them is hard and one of them is impossible so the goal of this course is exactly this, right? So this is the goal of this course. So this is the goal of this course, right? We want to be able to uh, understand computational questions like these, and we want to be we want to be in a position to say that uh, this is easy, this is hard, this is um, uh, this is impossible by computer, etc. And um, Right. And, and, and so first of all, we have to define what is easy, what is hard, what is impossible. Right. And then we should be able to uh, like systematically come up with a reasoning that that will tell us this is not easy. This is hard. This is easy. This is impossible, etc. etc. Right. So as a first step, we should understand what is computation. Right. This is also what we will see in this course. Like what can computers do? What is a computation? What can computers do? What can computers not do? Right. So these things we'll try to see over the course. Um, so one thing that 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 is uh, uh, that all of us know is that uh, computers uh, and uh, electronic devices in general are a rapidly the technology is so rapidly evolving. So um, so if, just to give a small example, the amount of RAM I have in my mobile phone now is 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 more than the amount of hard disk space that we had in uh, uh, like desktop machines maybe let's say 20 years back or 25 years back right so in 25 years the the, mem the, the hard disk space uh, is um, in in 97 25 years back is, is now uh, less than the, mem the the ram in uh, the mobile phone these days right so computers have evolved significantly but what we will see during this course is a theory of computation. So these are um, mathematical foundations of what uh, is a computation and we will try to understand this. And this, uh, this is fairly abstract which is not really uh, tied to a specific uh, uh, the, the RAM size or memory size or uh, the, the capacity of hard disk or whether the hard disk is solid state or, or magnetic. right? So this the theory of computation has remained applicable throughout right so j just because some speed has increased or memory has increased doesn't mean that the, the, the theory uh, becomes irrelevant or inapplicable right so that has remained uh, constant throughout 
and uh, so that's what we will see through during the course right so even though the, there is the field is rapidly evolving in terms of what computers can do and how fast they can do um, the, the fundamentals have not really changed right uh, just to give you a brief uh, overview the digital computers as we know it or at least giving uh, in in the current uh, architecture or the current uh, uh, in the, the current framework of digital computers this evolved during the second world war right uh, one of the reasons for this to happen is that um, there was a lot of uh, 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 encrypted communication that went on during the second world war so the, the different sites used to send messages uh, secret messages which were encoded and um, so even if the opposition the opponents uh, like could get hold of these messages uh, like by by intercepting the radio channels or let's say if it was a physical message by intercepting the messenger they they had to actually decrypt these messages right and this uh, this led to a lot of um, so 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 it's not an easy thing so this required a lot of uh, technology to be developed at that point and so it, it is not really a co um, it, it's not a coincidence that uh, the computers evolved significantly during the world war 2 and alan turing himself was involved in lot of code breaking uh, in the second world war and he is one of the people who are um, who are responsible for providing the theoretical basis for computation right and which is a significant amount of what we will see during this course will involve uh, his contributions right so the 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 models of machines the models of computers um, that we will uh, use for uh, use in this course are uh, called turing machines which is which is devised by alan turing right and uh, the paper in which he 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 actually uh, proposed this model um, came out in 1936 it's called on computer computable numbers with an application to the unstey dungs problem right so this is uh, i'll not get into what this problem was right now but this gave this paper gave this the theoretical basis of what computers can do so what we will see during this course uh, is um, we will first uh, see some simple models of computation so which are not really equivalent to the modern day computers these are some simple uh, somewhat rudimentary uh, models of computation which are not as powerful these are called automata so we'll see two types of automata um, one is called uh, uh, finite automata and one is called pushdown automata and we'll see what these machines can do then we will move to computers uh, or turing machines and we'll see computability theory right so we'll try to model these will as i said already this will be the models uh, of the uh, uh, these theoretical models of what the current modern computers can do and we'll try to understand what uh, turing machines can do so this leads us to computability theory so we'll be able to say things like this problem is computable and this problem is not computable right um and finally uh, so computable meaning it can be uh, solved using computers and finally we'll come to complexity theory so where we will only deal with um, how fast or efficiently can we solve a problem suppose we have a computer and we are using it to compute a certain thing like let's say we are trying to find the shortest path from home to office now how fast there maybe there are multiple ways of finding the shortest path so what is the fastest way what is the uh, way that will use the least amount of space and fastest meaning least amount of time right so meaning we are trying to optimize on the resources so two main resources that one considers during computation are uh, space which is how much memory we use and time how quickly we get the answer right so we'll try to um, uh, so this will be dealt with in the uh, complexity theory part complexity theory itself is a vast area and towards the late, uh, end of this course we will try to briefly introduce this topic so both of these topics are related right uh, complexity theory as well as computability theory and uh, complexity theory also has a lot of um, like uh, like applications in the sense that uh, 
for instance, just I mentioned cryptography already, where we um, send encoded messages to the uh, to 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 the to the other party. This was used during the war, but it was also it is also used every day now, right? So when you sign on to your email account, when you sign into your Mac account, we are seeing something, the information in our email inbox or the information in our bank account details. It is displayed in our desktop or in our computer. But we do not want anybody in between uh, like even our uh, internet provider or in any of these in between servers to see what is going on. We do not want them to know our bank account balance. right? So, these messages are encrypted. So, we want to encrypt first, but we do not want we want the encryption to be strong. So, we want it to be sufficiently hard. right? So, this is uh, this this requires some understanding of some problems being hard. So, we want to know which problems are hard. So, complexity theory will give us some way to analyze the easiness or difficulty of problems. So, easiness difficulty in terms of how much resources are required. Right. So, um, right. So, this is this is a, a brief overview of what we will see during the course. So, what is the expectation from this course? So, this is a basic undergraduate course, right? One thing that uh, it, will, it will be greatly helpful if, if you are familiar with basic discrete maths, like um, discrete maths, like, uh, like sets, relations, um, um, sets, relations, and then correspondence, injection, bijection, etc. Then proofs and proof techniques. So, basic uh, logic in trying to understand and reasoning. Uh, um, logical arguments and proof techniques, some simple techniques like induction etc will be helpful. If you are uh, learning algorithms or have learnt algorithms, the theory of algorithms that will also be helpful for the course. right? So, and the textbook that we will base uh, this course on is a textbook by uh, Michael Sipser, which who is at, uh, who is a professor at MIT. Um, the, the name of the textbook is Introduction to the Theory of Computation. Introduction to the Theory of Computation. This is the name of the textbook uh, that we will use during the course. Uh, of course, uh, in this NPTEL format, we will provide all the uh, necessary documents and all the all the notes will be shared, of course. So, this uh, is a basic uh, outline of the course. And um, so, before you move on to the, we move on to the next lecture. Uh, one small thing that uh, it will be helpful if all of us do, all of you do is to actually uh, read chapter 0 from the uh, textbook by Michael Sipser. So, it has a lot of uh, basic information that you would have already seen in the discrete maths course like sets, functions, relations, uh, theorems, proofs, etc. And fairly simple things. So, maybe it will help if you go through these details and familiarize yourself. These are just basic. Uh, basic uh, uh, discrete math stuff that uh, we expect to be aware of uh, to be uh, so that the, the rest of the course is comfortable. So, please have a look at chapter 0 and maybe solve some one or two simple problems. So, these are basic uh, basics of discrete math. These are not really like anything to do with uh, theory of computation, but learning this will help us um, uh, learn theory of computation easier and better. right? So, please go through these before uh, we come to the lecture next lecture and uh, finally i just want to get back to the three problems uh, so and want to say which one is easy which one is uh, hard and which one is impossible so problem 3 happens to be the easy one so which you could have guessed uh, because um, google maps kind of does this right so it tells us which is the shortest way from X A to B, right? And and this sits on everybody's phone or computers and and does this uh, efficiently. So that is the easy question. The hard question is problem two, the three coloring. It, it so uh, it so turns out that this problem is hard. And the first problem is the impossible one. Again, the definition of easy, hard, impossible, etc. We'll see during the course, right? So, yeah, that is it, uh, that is all that I have to say in uh, this lecture, this brief introductory lecture. 
In the next lecture, we will start with some uh, basics that will uh, help us uh, progress for the course. Thank you.